embittered. He, she therefore reacts in a particular way and that impinges on people around him and they then react according to how they think or feel or can. And therefore, this and that happen. This young boy's parents are growing apart. He's surrounded by uh, bitterness, ugliness, uncertainty. How will he cope? This woman is suddenly marginalized in her own family. How does she reassert herself? Or she who has been a prized asset in her corporate setup, delivering every target after target, suddenly starts having visions of someone from her past, someone who is no more, but he's actually right there standing beside her in her real time, walking with her into the lift, walking with her into the bank. What is this that is messing with her head? How does it affect her? How does it affect her reputation, her, her profile in the company? How is she going to cope? We watch the, the driven, the ambitious amongst us, we see them soar to dazzling heights. And we are amazed, we are enamored by their stories, we sing their stories in celebration. But there are those amongst us who have fought equally hard battles, but very quietly. Winning some, losing some. Some of us have probably crawled out of the deepest, darkest pits and have climbed out and come up and occupied their place, rightful place amongst us, their shoulders on par with us but yet they go unnoticed. These ordinary, obscure people have stories of their own. They're full of drama, full of drama, but they are unsung. And yet, they are not very different in their guts or in their grit or their energy or passion from the stories that we sing in celebration. It is this core universality of yet the separating disparity of human thought and emotion and narrative that absorbed me and still absorbs me and it has been manifesting through words. The words have always come on their own, sometimes in frustratingly thin trickles, sometimes in gushing torrents and as I began pouring it all out, stories were born, men and women were talking, laughing, walking. They struggled, they rejoiced, they grieved, and I did it all with them. I felt everything in its tiniest detail. I giggled, I sniggered, I grew angry, I swore, I cursed. I was sad, I was pensive. The whole spectrum of everything we think, feel, are. There were times when my husband would come home and he'd come home from work and he would see me hunched over my computer hammering away and my face is distorted and I'm weeping copiously and unabashedly and he would grow alarmed and he would cry out to me and saying, stop, you're driving yourself mad. And I would just snap at him. I mean, I, I, I always snap at him. That no, if I were to stop, I will definitely go mad. Well, this is a bit of that madness. But I think it's legitimate madness. I. I put it this way, I suddenly make a new acquaintance. He starts talking to me. His words are saying something, but there's a something else that is revealed about him, unknown to him. And I suddenly have this sense of deja vu. 
where have I seen him, where have I met him and I'm wondering and wondering and then I realize, oh yes, he had been hiding in my head all this while. I had thought of him, I had made him up some years ago. Well, that is validation, isn't it? When the world outside begins to resemble the world that you have imagined for yourself. That is legitimized madness. Well, this book, as I said, is a bit of that madness. The beginning bit. Read it. I am, of course, there in it. But you never know, you might find yourself there too. And just to give you an idea of what it reads like, I shall read the first two pages of the story from which the name of the book has been inspired, of Swans and Songs. She felt a nip in the air, a distinct coolness, a sharp edge to an otherwise everyday morning. The weather gods seemed to have sent an emissary ahead, a harbinger of the changing season. The familiar marginal drop in temperatures, the familiar pre-Diwali cloudless skies, and the familiar progress of a familiar cycle. As if in an instinctive response, Suhasini opened the fridge again, ferreted out a tiny knob of ginger, scrubbed it clean, and crushed it, dropping it into the pot, letting its juices flow into the tea brewing on the stove. That should do well today, she told herself. Of course, a Mumbai winter is just a token relief from the usual sweltering heat. Yet, she smiled, it is a welcome change. Soon she was out on the balcony, dusting its lone cane chair and worn-out cushion before settling down with the newspaper and her cup of morning sunshine. The black and white print floated obscurely in front of her eyes. Reaching for her spectacles, she began catching up with the world. Occasionally, a wisp of her graying hair stole across her brow, and with a mechanical twitch of her fingers, she tucked it back in place. From somewhere in the distance, she heard a voice practicing the basic music scales, raw, untutored, going laboriously up and down. Probably an unwilling child, she inferred. Slowly the pages turned as she scanned the political news, the round of city events, the social gossip, her eyes fleeting past what she considered mundane, resting on what she thought interesting, a frown here, a flicker of a smile there, and then she cursorily skimmed the obituaries and suddenly grew still. For there it was, the one's familiar face, now no more. Mourned by brother and his family. May her soul rest in peace, they prayed. No mention of anyone else, no lover, no friend. And the papers fell onto her lap. She continued to sit still, in silence, the corners of the papers lifting in the gentle breeze, her spectacles slipping to the tip of her nose, the dregs in her teacup growing dark. From somewhere afar, snatches of Kumarji's rendition of Hansa Kela wafted through. Someone in the neighboring apartment building playing his CD of Kabir Bhajans. It had always been one of her personal favorites, but now she barely noticed. How did that happen? She asked herself. She had heard of her suffering from cancer. There had been those seemingly discreet whispers, as if even the mention of her name could by itself be construed an offense. But she still hadn't been prepared for this. Had it really been terminal? What now, she wondered. Do I take cognizance of this, or do I ignore it? And how does it change things? 
She picked up the page again, and Pierre did the photo. No, she thought. It doesn't really do any justice to the woman. She was far better looking than that. Nor did that little square in the dreary column reveal her hypnotic power, her vibrant personality, her true appeal. Is this what one is reduced to, finally? Just an insignificant, blurred little blob in a page that too if someone bothers to put it in. When had this photo been taken? Was it recent? Well, if so, she hadn't aged much. Didn't she go through chemo? And didn't that take any toll? And she waited for that familiar thrust of hatred to surge again. That earlier blinding rage that had once consumed her, had forever corroded her equanimity. That knife that had twisted in her, ruthlessly butchering her life as she had once known it. Those demons that had once ruled over her, she waited for them to resurface. But curiously, she felt nothing. No anger, no jealousy, no sense of wounded pride, no bitterness, zero. And setting the papers down firmly, she questioned herself. Is this what was necessary? Her death? She shook her head in disbelief. I seem to be free at last, she thought. Good morning, Mama. Isn't it a bit cooler today? Much better than last night, don't you think? Want some more tea? But Suhasini did not respond. Mama, isn't that Hans Akela? At first I thought you were playing it. I didn't know there was another Kumar fan in the neighborhood. And she turned around to see her daughter Neha entering the kitchen, nodding her head in rhythm to the bhajan before joining in, her trained voice picking up the inflections in the singers. Udjaiga, she sang, Hans Akela. Udjaiga, Hans Akela. Jagdarshan ka mela. The swan flies away alone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paranj Pesati, for this beautiful reading. And uh, I, I'm sure we all got a little bit of an idea of the quality of the book, quality of the writing, the nature of the stories, the level of the language, etc., from her words. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the author, I would like to say thank you to each one of you, um, each one of you present here today, for having taken time out and to be a part of this launch ceremony. Our deepest gratitude to Dr. Vidya Yeramdikar and to Dr. Madhuri Joshi for their revered presence and for sharing their invaluable thoughts with us today. We also thank all the persons for all their behind the scenes activities and logistic support to make this event a success. We thank you all. Have a very good evening. Do please join us for the refreshments. Thank you. <laughs>